In Humans, episode one, thoughts behold the Inhumans. Yeah, uh, spoilers for every everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. This show is rated TV PG, and so will this video be. I watched Madam Web last night, and these are about equally meh. Let's dive right in. So yeah, a uh, very stylish opening with the, the slow motion and just the, the cinematography very nicely done. It, it did feel kind of show-offy, like it didn't really seem completely justified. Like, you know, there's this thing of, oh, you know, oh, the, you know, the, the, um, I already forgot. What was her name again? Um, yeah. The, the inhuman on earth, you know, yeah, the, the, you know, she's in danger, but we don't know her yet, and, you know, like, we, we learn pretty quickly that she's inhuman, so that I do appreciate, but it's not really, you know, if this was, like, a returning character from another Marvel thing, you know, that would be a good way to, to lead into this. You know, you don't have to have stuff like that, but if you're going to get that, like, melodramatic, yeah, I, I don't know, it, I, I felt like it needed to be more, yeah, Hon honestly, they should probably just have dialed it back and saved, like, that kind of melodramatic stuff for once, yeah, you know, late in the episode when the there are these attacks on the... Uh, what's it called on the on the various members of the royal family there you can get super dramatic and, and stylized I think but here at the start it's just yeah and yeah there's this this the the opening with the the gunfire and all this there's just too much slow-mo especially for something that is not at all on the level of John Woo, you know, not everything slow-mo has to be John Woo, but if you're going to use this much slow-mo in this short amount of time, yeah, it kind of has, it doesn't have to be exactly like John Woo, but it has to be that level of, of quality. And, yeah, I, I like the moment of, you know, Medusa putting away the, the calm link, you know, that is very, very humanizing. And, yeah, you know, there's that line about, you know, do you remember what it was like before we were royalty? Me neither, you know, and, I mean, I feel like that, again, you know, it's it's there to humanize. I don't think it's enough, considering that we learned that, you know, Black Bolt is not really taking care of these problems that Maximus brings up. And let's see. You're right, I, I like the you know the camera pulling out and we see Adelan and then we see you know the, the cloaking field. <clears throat> that was quite yeah, and the the rover bonks up against it and it's one of those things where it's like would would they really not have thought of some kind of yeah um like hypothetically instead of just making it invisible and just making it seem like oh you can you can totally go there even though you know in reality there's this barrier just make just put something there that they wouldn't drive the rover into, like make it up, um, you know. Let's see, are there mountains on the moon? I guess not. Ah, uh, oh, hmm. Actually, yeah. Come to think of it, I guess on the moon it's difficult to to make something natural there. I guess it's out of the question to just have the city floating slightly off the moon. It just still feels like you know, like. Not so much by the end of this episode, but I feel like this is definitely going to lead to more humans realizing about 
then you know that there's clearly something there. At, at the very least, this the scientist is going to keep pursuing this, and it just seems like you know I I get that you wanted to bring humans into it. It feels like a kind of silly way to do it, and yeah, I I. It was slightly amusing, the thing of, you know, you see that? That's a hoof. Oh, come on. No one on Earth is going to think that's a hoof. That looks like a hoof. That was, it's, you know, it's it's an easy joke, but it's, it, was, it was decent. And, yeah, so basically Maximus has not, you know, ter Terragenesis did not have the effect on him that it was supposed to. He appears to not have developed powers, but he basically identifies as, you know, inhuman, which, you know, I feel very keen on trying to apply an LGBTQ plus lens to the show, since this is building off, you know, three seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which very much like the metaphor there yeah the meta that metaphor worked there that allegory worked there i mean i if, yeah based on that basically it's as if he is <clears throat> it would be like he's he's trans or non-binary and everyone around him are very, very intolerant but then that doesn't really like it almost it kind of seems more like the the rest of the inhumans are the lgbtq plus ones yeah it's it's slightly confused and it also like do we really need more stories where the bad guy is someone who isn't special but really wants to be like you know, yeah, I'm just not sure that's really something that... I, I get that there was once a time where basically, you know, they just didn't have the... the they probably had the resources, but they did not quite have the infrastructure to make, you know, to, to bring about equality, so you kind of needed people to accept, okay, this person or this small group, they have the power because if people were constantly questioning them, you'd have civil war, you know. But, so, so you know, back then there was media that, you know, there were stories written and, and oral that would help, you know, reinforce that this was the, the way to go. I don't think we need that anymore. I think that is the last thing we you know we need the opposite. We need stories where p the powerful few are challenged, and it feels very regressive, honestly, to to see something. You know, this came out in twenty seventeen, and yeah, we learned that you know Terragenesis, you know the the. Um, the religious authority person here says, you know, it's what elevates us above others, which again really confuses the the trans metaphor. If that is what it's supposed to be, but then like this takes plot, you know, they specifically say in this episode, you know, there has been terogenesis on Earth where you know we have to, if you know, yeah, that's something that we have to to face the consequences of. Yeah, that appears to be referencing, you know, the, the, let's see, that was the end of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, and then we saw more of it over the course of Season 3. I'm not sure we saw a lot of new Inhumans in Season 4, but, but yeah, you know, and uh, let's see... Yeah, um, and then we have Karnak being very, like, nihilistic, and, yeah, just, you know, let's see, I, I do kind of, I, I kind of respect that he's saying all this 
while you know he's he's they actually someone entered it into the the memorable quote section here on IMDb or on IMDb you know the the universe will grow darker black holes dominate the cosmos no one will be left to observe this no one left to care you know and it's like I mean this is like a big deal at least for the 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 two inhuman the, the yeah the the two inhumans going through Terra Genesis so it's wow what a what a buzzkill I, if they can't hear it but you know clearly like Black Bolt can and let's see yeah I like the reveal of it like Lockjaw from a distance you know it looks like oh it's like a normal you know it's it's an it's the same size size dog as human you know the, the human dogs the you know human pets but then as it runs closer we see no it's actually massive that was not a perspective thing it you know or rather it was a perspective thing anyway and and yeah you know once the you know the okay what what's your powers and he flies and everyone's like wow and you know one of them says i love flyers so that's you know that that is gender euphoria that is when when trans people can can take joy in their trans identity so there it like it's a one to one you know this is like the terogenesis is a perfect stand in here for like successful you know um gender affirming healthcare you know when yeah when that isn't like fought against you know the the um, several people in their you know in the immediate yeah who have also gone through this are like wow you know they're they're yeah so that makes it confusing that it doesn't apply across the the board and let's see yeah and the <clears throat> The two of them are taken to the lower caste living quarters, I think it was. And we learn that if you go through Terragenesis but you don't develop powers, you go to the mines. And this is where it just, like, holy crap, why? How are the royal family who support this? They're, you know, they let, let, let this happen, you know. How are they supposed to be the good guys here? How is Maximus the villain? Like, I guess because he's saying, you know, okay, yeah, let's see. He's he's anti-refugee, which is, of course, a, a huge problem today. There's way too many people who won't accept refugees and, you know, immigration in general. But especially, like, if you can't even let in refugees, there's just no, yeah. Um... So that's one thing. Another thing is that he basically says, you know, in order to, to get by, the Inhumans of the Moon should invade Earth and, and take over. You would, which, like, yeah, because everyone watching the show is a human living on Earth. So we're supposed to be like, oh, you can't do that, you know, but it's like, why is it not just that Black Bolt says, or signs, Black Bolt signs, you know, maybe Medusa translates, yes, we need more room, we have to, you know, work with the humans, and Maximus is like, no, you know, we, he could be the one to say, you know, they are beneath us, but, you know, Black Bolt and the others didn't seem to mind when the, the religious you know, authority said, you know, Terragenesis, you know, elevates, you know, certain above others, you know, so, yeah, just, and, let's see, yeah, and, and Maximus lays it out, and, I, again, I guess it's supposed to play as, like, oh, he's being selfish for not wanting to work the mines? Seriously? That's selfish. Really, in the year 2017, we're supposed to think that you should not get to, to make a counter argument if someone says you're going to spend your entire life working in mines. Like, just, you know, basically Black Bolt 
should have, you know, they should have reversed it to where Black Bolt and Medusa are the villains, and, and Maximus is one of the heroes. And, again, you know, there's only, the, the, the stuff that speaks against that is Maximus being against letting in refugees, and the, you know, wanting to, to wage war. I guess it's possible that, what, you know, he says that there's not enough resources to let in refugees. This is often a dog whistle, but we don't know, like, maybe it's true in the comics, but in, in this show so far, they haven't really delivered a counter-argument to that. Like, it, it is possible. There are places around the world that, though it would be great if they could, they just don't quite have the resources to, to support refugees and and it's not you know it doesn't help the refugees to try to force them into a place that can't you know yeah can't sustain them that's just gonna make them and the people already there miserable you know the the yeah like uh, in this situation is Maximus like supposed to stand in for you know people in you know, conserv yeah those conservatives in America and England who say, oh, you know, we can't let in refugees. Meanwhile, you know, there's tons of empty houses. You know, they're, they're throwing away in just completely absurd amounts of food. You know, it's a lack of political will. It's not a matter of do we have the, you know, do they have the resources. Is that what Maximus is in this situation? Or is he a Zionist saying, you know, the the... Yeah, the this thing of you know the the we matter more than the these other people. Just yeah, it, it's uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, so when when Karnak outlines the the whole thing of you know how it would be if he and this servant girl you know if they if they dated like i think we're supposed to to think that oh you know he's so foolish he should you know he he shouldn't have said the entire truth he should have just you know said the positive parts and such but like we're still like he's making her extremely uncomfortable you know the yeah, I, I really don't think that was that was handled well. It kinda comes across as like he's nagging her and fails to you know, to win her over with that and just Yeah. I mean I don't know if we're supposed to like him, but I don't again, we're not supposed to think of him as one of the villains. Like he literally says, you know, I'll I'll you know I don't know if I really want to repeat, but just, you know, after, yeah, he says that her habits will make him want to take a certain course of action, which just, we need less, not more media of, of male characters saying that, unless it's being explored. You know, I think the movie Fresh does an excellent job exploring the, the, the mentality there. Uh, the yeah the 2022 movie, fresh. Um, let's see. Then we have the. Um, um, yeah right. We have the the um, apparently you know. Before, um, Medusa chose Black Bolt, she was best friends with Maximus. You know, which again, you know, we're supposed to think, oh, he's the he's the bad guy because he's like jealous, which again, in a vacuum, would be great, but by this point, he's basically like, you know, he's the voice of the people. He, you know, just yeah. Um, and then we have the. Yeah, um, and and then you know um, Maximus starts the attack 
on the the various uh, people. You know, he tries to to talk this one guy into supporting him, and the guy basically says, you know, it, I think the the guy basically agrees, but he refuses to go with the yeah, and. You know, it it was a decent enough twist. This thing, you know, Auron is actually on Maximus' side. That's why she volunteered to go with. You know, she was like, okay, you know, in case Maximus needs, you know, if if this guy says no, Maximus is gonna want him taken out. If I go with, he won't have to call the guards to arrest Maximus. So. You know, that was a decent enough. And and she says, you know, my king. And, yeah. Um, great needle drops. Then we have some attacks that fail. And I don't know why Maximus and his people thought they wouldn't. Um, yeah. You know, Karnak even has the line, you shouldn't have given me a choice. Like, okay, I'm... I don't have a lot of experience taking out psychics but I would imagine you'll want to like box them in don't don't approach them with with guns that he can use you know just and it's it's yeah um they you know yeah they actually they do end up you know able to to stop Medusa why do they walk close at first I guess just to, to show off her, her power, which, you know, had already been established. It's not like it just established. I guess it's supposed to be like a lost hurrah. She's, you know, using her, her powers before they shave off the, the hair. Yeah, it, it just felt really, really silly. They have guns, and they do ultimately take over the, the situation and uh, let's see. I think that might be about what I have. Um, I th I felt like there was one more thing. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah, the the episode ends with Black Bolt taken to to Earth, and. Yeah, that's, you know, going to be the big thing. Oh, right, right, yes, now I remember. Um, yeah, so Maximus actually hired the the people who were shooting, you know. Yeah, he wanted to make sure that Gorgon would go to, to Earth to deal with, you know, yeah, after, after Triton dies. And, like, there, you know, there definitely are, you know, it's basically, it's a false flag, you know, he's, he's, yeah, it's a, it's a person trying to, to gain or, gain or maintain power, doing something, and, and blaming someone else, and, yeah, that is a, a decent enough, like, what's the word, um, You know, that is something that, that people in these circumstances have used. Yeah, uh, the attack on Gorgon, again, they have guns. It's, you know, it certainly looks like you have to get very close to him in order for him to be able to, to do that. So why do they walk so close? You know, it's... Yeah. I, I get that it's difficult to, to write something like this where the, the superpowers are able to stop it but then you know if if you're not quite up to it maybe you should let someone else write this stuff because there are people who do you know um yeah amazing work with this kind of thing i'd say james gunn has has consistently proven he can write scenes where it feels like okay the characters would actually believe that they're going to be able to you know take control of this situation 
Now, uh, right, so IMDb trivia, so yeah, a month before the TV premiere, this and Those Who Would Destroy Us, which I believe is the second, the second episode, were, uh, let's see, we're showing us a 75-minute movie on IMAX theaters for two weeks. This is the first live-action TV series to debut this way, and I think that is probably why at least some of the slow motion and such is, is in there. And, ah, in the comics, Lockjaw is the pet of Black Bolt, not of Crystal. And, yeah, you have the thing, of the, yeah, the water supply on Earth was contaminated by Terrigen Crystals, season two finale of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, and yeah, in the comics, it's Karnak who does not have Terrigenesis-related powers, and, yeah, in the comics, Maximus has the power of limited mind control, and here seemingly lacks powers. Um, I think that is about... Um, yeah, there's some, some goofs that are like factual, <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, character error, Gorgon advises his would-be killers that they should never approach Downwind. In fact, Downwind is exactly where a hunter should approach if they don't want to be smelled by their prey. He should have advised them not to approach Upwind, which is funny because he says it with such confidence, you know, just, yeah, that's, wow. And... Right, um, so on, under alternate versions on IMDb, the IMAX version omitted the scenes involving Louise and her superiors at the California Observatory, as well as Maximus' confrontation with the head of the Genetic Council. So they they dropped the, the cut from no one thinks that's a hoof to doesn't that look like a hoof? Wow, that's really, like, I, I guess it's, did they did they not film that with IMAX cameras, or maybe it was a they wanted it to have a very specific length or something? Just yeah, it feels very mis misjudged to me. So uh, yeah, next episode I will do tomorrow, and yeah. Um, I think I've said everything that I have to say about this episode. Um, I mean, I do think that, you know, certainly Anson Mount makes a, a strong impression. You know, I've, I've liked him in other stuff as well. Um, yeah, I... I you know, it is kind of impressive how many different inhuman powers this episode fits in. An argument could be made that there's maybe one or two too many. Um, yeah, I, I, and and certainly, yeah, some of the characters and their interpersonal dynamics come across well. Like clearly, this is not the first time that Gorgon has done something that some of the others think was very ill-advised. You know, there's very much an energy of, really, this again? Are you seriously, how do you still not understand this? And he's like, come on, this is okay, you know, kind of thing. Like, that's, yeah. Which, you know, in reality, these are actors. This is the the first scene they do like this. So it is is always great when you can get across to the audience that this has happened before because there's it's not necessary for the audience to just see scene after scene after scene of the same thing it's if if it doesn't accomplish anything but yeah um see you again tomorrow